Hello, good evening. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. I'm reading Common Rush Daily Prayer, evening prayer for Easter season, which you'll find on the Church of England's website and at Remus Daily Prayer, downloadable apps for Apple or Android devices. You're very welcome to join me here in the building and in most days, 8 and 6, do uh, drop us a line if you're thinking of coming from any distance. You may join by Zoom too. The code on the Blind Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook and I'm recording audio and will upload that onto my Dominic Dover YouTube channel presently. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to you be glory and praise for ever. From the deep waters of death you brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. Through him dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless soul. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The full bit of Chartres hymn. Ye choirs of New Jerusalem, your sweetest notes employ the paschal victory to him in strains of holy joy. How Judah's lion crushed, burst his chains and crushed the serpent's head and brought with him from death's domains the long-imprisoned dead. Triumphant in his glory, now his sceptre ruleth all. Earth, heaven, and hell before him bow, and at his footstool fall. While joyful thus his praise we sing, his mercy we implore, into his palace bright to bring, and keep us evermore. All glory to the Father be, all glory to the Son, all glory, Holy Ghost, to thee, while endless ages run. Alleluia. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. So we now turn to the Psalms. If you're following the book, you'll find them at the back. The appointed psalm this evening are numbers 67 and 72. 67 and 72. 67 will jump straight in with and say the glory be after the last verse. Pause and you might read the prayer that follows and use it as you will. 72 we open and close with the refrain saying the glory be after the last verse before returning to the refrain and again pausing to read the prayer as we see fit. Psalms 67 and 72. God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the son of a king. Then shall he judge your people righteously, and your poor with justice. May the mountains bring forth peace, and to the little hills righteousness for the people. May he defend the poor among the people, deliver the children of the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live as long as the sun and moon endure, from one generation to another. May he come down like rain upon the mown grass, like the showers that water the earth. In his time shall righteousness flourish, 
and abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. May his dominion extend from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his foes kneel before him, and his enemies lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall pay tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring gifts. All kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall do him service. For he shall deliver the poor that cry out, the needy and those who have no helper. He shall have pity on the weak and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and dear shall their blood be in his sight. Long may he live. Unto him may be given gold from Sheba. May prayer be made for him continually, and may they bless him all the day long. May there be abundance of grain on the earth, standing thick upon the hilltops. May its fruit flourish like Lebanon, and its grain grow like the grass of the field. May his name remain forever, and be established as long as the sun endures. May all nations be blessed in him, and call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wonderful things. And blessed be his glorious name for ever. May all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. I'm scrolling past our first reading to the Song of Faith, turning back in our books to evening prayer during Easter season. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You were ransomed from the futile ways of your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without spot or stain. Through him you have confidence in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. God raised Christ from the dead, the lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. So to our first Bible reading, Exodus 24, you'll find Exodus in the second book of the Hebrew Scriptures. So if you've got a Bible off the shelf with both covenants in it, turn to the beginning. And uh, after Genesis, you'll find Exodus. And scroll through to you find the large number 24 at the head of the paragraph. That's the chapter number. And we're reading the whole jolly lot. Then God said to Moses, come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship at a distance. Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but the others shall not come near, and the people shall not come up with him. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up twelve pillars corresponding to the twelve tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the people of Israel who burnt, offered burnt offerings and sacrificed offer, oxen as offerings of well-being to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he dashed against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people and they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do and we will be obedient. Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people and said, See the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet there was something like a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. God did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. Also they beheld God, and they ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he said, Wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. So I have to say, reading this, I'm not quite sure of the chronology of this. Moses seemed to spend a lot, if not all, of his time on the top of the hill. Some of it with some elders, perhaps. Some of it at a bit of a distance from some of the elders. Uh, and some with uh, Joshua. Uh, <clears throat> it appears that Aaron and Hera left with the people. 
can sort out uh, disputes. But uh, we're told that uh, God speaks. We're told that God has given some tablets of stone, so we've got words spoken and words written. And uh, we've got a description of God as uh, fairly typical of the apocryphal or revelation, revelatory material. No, apocryphal, what do I mean? Apocalyptic material. Um, human form. Under feet, something like a pavement of sapphire stone. Very heaven for clearness. Interesting, God did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people. They beheld God, they ate and drank. So ordinarily we'd have just the prophets having tastes, visions, ideas of God. But here we've got the elders with Moses, Aaron, Nadab and Abihu and 70 elders at this, in this portion. But uh, we're told that God instructs Moses to go up with um, these elders. And before he goes, he offers sacrifices having set up an altar, 12, 12 pillars, and uh, each of the tribes offer an animal. And then Moses makes his way with the elders and uh, goes on that a little bit further. I wonder whether this is similar to Jesus on the Mount of Olives, leaving his uh, apostles and disciples to, as he goes off to pray, and then he finds them sleeping. Is this similarly Moses going on that a bit further and then coming back to them? One way or another, the, the spoken word and the written word are made available to God's people and the offering and sacrifice uh, seal that, speak of that covenant, see the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. So there is the, the sacrifice, there is the promise, there is worship, and so it is for us today as we engage with God. Um, within the Christian liturgy, the sacrifice is represented the sacrifice of God in Jesus is represented by the uh, breaking of bread at the Eucharist or the Mass, the Lord's table. <clears throat> so we're not uh, literally doused in blood of a beheaded animal. But nevertheless, a life is given in our stead and we hear the words, we worship. And people from amongst us are taken into God's presence that they may serve us and bring God's presence to us and explain the law that we may live right. So to our second Bible reading, Luke 1 from 39 to 56. Scroll on to it if you're following electronically in the Holy Bible, open two thirds of the way through and move towards the back. Matthew, Mark, Luke, look at the Gospel of Luke and the large number one at the head of the paragraph this time, the chapter number one, and the small numbers in the text are the verses 39 to 56. Luke 1 from 39. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, and why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfilment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his children forever, descendants forever. Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home. Lovely little portion of scripture, these two women. Mary, the mother of Jesus, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, the mother of John. Um, is one an aunt for the other? They're related, aren't they? And um, we've got the Hail Mary. Um, I'll add, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And uh, that's what Elizabeth says of Mary. And she says that the child in her womb leapt for joy, so already witnessing 
to uh, the child in Mary's womb is John. And then that lovely line, Best is she who believed that there would be a fulfilment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. One of those texts or scriptures to be written on a bookmark or um, woven into a cross stitch to place above the fireplace. It's, uh, echoes of uh, well, God would be faithful to complete good work. God has begun in you. And uh, this is written to and for women in a book written by men, for men, predominantly in those days. And yet this is a very feminine account of the trust, trusting of a person with a womb who'd been told they were going to have a child. And yes, it's in questionable circumstances and is what God did tantamount to rape. It's a challenging and difficult text, but if we read it in that sort of religious, hopeful approach uh, and manner, then this is somebody who was without child, promised to have child, and there is that child in her. And the weird, odd blessedness of that child is confirmed by the child in her cousin or aunt's womb jumping for joy. And then she, th this song is put into her mouth. It's uh, not quite a word-of-word -word copy, but it echoes Hannah's song when she found she had a child. The only two in the Bible, as far as I'm aware. Um, I don't know whether it was a liturgy that was generally used when um, women were found to have children. But it would have been true that a woman without a child was at almost worthless in those days. That The meek has been raised up, the powerful brought low, particularly as this child is going to speak truth to power. And so it is for us, male or female, let us believe in the promise that God has given us. And we may have physical children, we may have the opportunity to teach people and bring people on from ignorance to knowledge, whether that's within the church or beyond, and care for people as a parent cares for their children, even if we don't have children ourselves. And as children, we may be cared for by Mother Church and those that God has prepared and presented, pr provided for us as parents, even if we don't have them ourselves. And then after that excitement, we've got the lines, Mary remained for three months and then returned home. And so we must live with these uh, endorsements, these confirmations of faith through the ordinary times. Um, not every day will be a mountaintop, um, as it was for Moses, or that sort of extraordinary in the ordinary of somebody endorsing our hope for our child, as Mary experienced here with Elizabeth. Yet God is with us, ever faithful ever present and so the church is with us ever faithful ever present even if the church isn't being regularly used for worship or for any other purpose for now it is still there even until it falls down ready to be renewed restored as with the faith that it represents in our communities so to the responsory back in evening prayer during easter season the lord is my strength and my song he has become my salvation the lord is my strength and my song he has become my salvation I shall not die but live, and declare the works of the Lord. He has become my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Song of Mary. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. Source, Son, Essence, 1 in 3, 3 and 1. We come to you at the end of this day and we look back at those moments where you have blessed us, where we have been aware of your presence, where things have gone well, where we've had good news of money, of friendship, of relationship, of progress, where we have uh, made progress in jobs and tasks at home, work or elsewhere, 
If we feel good about that, we might have rested or be creative, explored other facets of the people we are that's not necessarily associated with work. But if they've been kind, thankful, grateful, supportive, and we thank you for all those things that have inspired us and enabled us to feel good about who we are and where we are. However, we might have had a day where we might have needed to call upon you, but not, where we might have felt distant from you, where people might have been unkind, our own voices and addictions might have brought us low, our situation of poverty, joblessness, homelessness, fear, pain and hurt might have brought us low, and uh, we might feel overwhelmed by responsibility, and indeed found ourselves uh, subject to more demands rather than less as we've made our way through the day. So if that has been our experience, we come to you for your healing, your restoration, your protection, and for your boundary, for your hedging us around, that we may have time to rest, recuperate, and be restored, to regroup, ready for the day ahead tomorrow. From Release International, in a raid on Chan Pa in the Sagang, Sagang region of Myanmar, military forces set fire to a church and destroy the village. We pray for the 3,000 villagers forced to flee. Turning to Christian AIDS. Um, website. I don't know if it's going to open for me here. I can't immediately see it, that might be it. One moment. My um, browser. Isn't using PDFs, although I think this wasn't. This is online. So, uh, open Christian Aid website and uh, reading the prayers. We pray for the ongoing work of Christian Aid in the Democratic Republic of Congo amidst continued instability in the region. And we pray for stability and the flourishing of that work, of that organization in that place. The Joint Public Issues Team Prayer for Ukraine includes the lines. We mourn every casualty of conflict and every precious life extinguished by war. And as we pray for the coronation from the um, nationally produced booklet, looking up today's date and turning to page 32. We read a verse of the National Anthem, God save our gracious King, long live our noble King, God save the King, send him victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us, God save the King. And uh, turning to Suffolk Diocese uh, Prayer Diary, I don't know if that will open for us, oh there we are, sitting there open as a previously opened tab fairly straightforwardly. And today with the diocese we pray for Ipswich St Margaret parishes and its clergy Sarah are licensed today and uh, a licensed evangelist Helen. We pray for other clergy serving and working in that uh, parish, group of parishes, be they house for duty or wish to officiate uh, or other. We pray also for their readers, ditto, and elders, and for their treasurers, wardens, and secretaries, that they all might be inspired as they see you working through them in that place. Pray for the diocesan education team. They work with 87 church schools and academies in the diocese, and whatever support they might offer other schools also. We thank you for them. May they be encouraged as they see the hearts, lives, minds of young people uh, bolstered, encouraged, nur encouraged, nurtured by involving them in those safe Christian communities and uh, teaching them how to express themselves and communicate and receive the expressions and communications of others and uh, to play sport, to engage in creative self-expression uh, in terms of art and drama alongside the reading, writing, arithmetic. And also from the diocesan prayer side, we pray for the many East Africa who are being affected by the climate crisis. Pray for wisdom for Western governments that they will exact enact policies which move us away from burning fossil fuels and making the situation worse and not only enacting but also taking action 
we thank you uh, for the fact that organisations such as uh, the Environment Agency in our own in our countries um, have carbon budgets alongside their financial budgets and projects that they recommend um, have to demonstrate how they're better in terms of carbon than another project if they are going to be the one adopted or chosen. We pray for our uh, deanery benefices in vacancy and for other clergy in our chapter holding the fort, and especially for those who need to make up funds to maintain their paid position full-time in their situations. And turning to our valley, we pray for the people and businesses of Holton, associated with the addresses of Beckles Road, South Hall Road, The Street, Holton Road, Bungie Road, Blythe Lane, and Sparrow Hawk Road, and in Wenniston, Blackheath Road, Blythe Close, Back Lane, Oak Meadow Close, Church Lane, Colesview, Back Road, Coles Hill, Colescroft, Blythe Lane, and Hammonds Walk. Bramfield, Church Farm Road, Bridge Street, The Hill, Pitmans Grove, Edwards Lane, Low Road, Houseworth Road, Walpole Road, Thornton Road, Wenniston Road, and South Royal Road, Blyford Lane, King Estate in Blyford, and in Thornton, Priory Lane, Street, Fox Lane, Low Road, Fairfield, The Wash, Brussels Green, Wesselton Road, Willow March Lane, and Devil's Lane. Pray for the businesses and uh, serving or based in those places that all involved will make the right decision that they may continue to provide goods, jobs, and services and indeed thrive bringing people, business, money into uh, and uh, status to the villages, to this part of Suffolk. And we pray that they too, alongside their financial carbon concerns, they will uh, contribute to the environment uh, and to people's lives and livelihoods, well-being in this place through their offer. Pray for people living in those addresses for whom life is going well. May they turn to their neighbours with generosity and support and to you with thanksgiving. And where things are going less well, May people turn to you in prayer and uh, find the answer to those prayers uh, through your sovereign grace and through agencies, neighbours, community, family and friends. And we pray a special blessing on Sheila, Peter, Adrian, Ron and Jean, Felicity, Pedro, Maggie, Valerie, Graham, Jackie and Richard and others we may know for whom life is a challenge at the moment. We ask that you will act in your grace, that they will know your presence, that they will know you have heard, that that presence will be experienced directly and or through those who know and love them, those around about, who have responsibility for their care and support. Pray for those who we are aware of in terms of our safeguarding cases under view, care, support um, across our villages this evening. And pray for good outcomes, and where that isn't the case, that isn't going to be possible uh, that you will see these people through even their death through the gates and the valley of death into your greater presence through that route which you have gone before we thank you for all the good and lives of Gillian, Chaz, John, Ben, Sheila, Mary, Thelma, Dave, Linda, John and all others who have recently died including those who have died suddenly and unprepared pray for those we've known and loved and seen no longer those who have served you faithfully here and all whose ears mind falls at this time we ask that according to your promise that humanity grants us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of loved one, all change in life chances, that you will be for us the way, the truth and the life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <laughs> The <laughs> Collect for Easter from the Book of God of Life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him through the joy of his risen life. 
sorry, in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Goodbye to those joining us on Facebook and YouTube.